What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of John Read Through. We read through the book of John ever so slowly, and I just hope y'all are having a great week. I know I am, and it's you know my life is doing pretty good right now. I'm doing having a pretty good life right now. I'm a senior in high school, and I don't know how many of y'all who are subscribed to me are seniors or not, but graduation for me is coming pretty quick. I'm graduating in June, getting pretty excited about that, so my high school career is going to a little close, but you know what? I'm going to still preach God's Word. I don't care how old I am. I'm still going to preach God's Word because God's Word is, is true, it's good, and it's good for anybody across the world. I don't care if you're from J Japan, from Europe, anywhere in the world. You need to hear what the Word has to say. So, we're in John chapter 10 now, and we're uh, starting a new chapter, John chapter 10. And just going to tell you all that today's video is all about, is Jesus the Lord of your life? Is Jesus over your life? Is He, is he the master of your life? Because right now we're going to be reading a little parable about Jesus and talking about the shepherd and his flock. And how the, you know how shepherd is. He takes care of his flock. He, he makes sure that his, his sheep do not get lost. Because if one sheep is lost, he'll leave all the other sheep and go find that one sheep. So he will be happy. So let's start. And if you have your Bible, please open up right now to God's um, holy word. We're in John chapter 10. We'll be reading verses 1 through 1 through 21 today so thank you everybody for um, tuning in let's get started I tell you the truth the man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate but climbs in by some other way is a thief and a robber so Jesus is already starting to preach about this great parable the man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of his sheep the watchman opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Now Jesus is referring to his followers. He's, he's referring to Christians, referring to um, people who have put their faith in him. They know his voice, and they follow him wholeheartedly. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never f follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from, them, from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. I remember back when I was a little kid, like uh, my mom always told me, do not talk to strangers. And this, specifically right here, um, I mean, this is a great example like when we are Christians living in a sin-filled world, we do not need to trust anybody, but we need to only trust in Jesus and show the love and compassion that he had for us 2,000 years ago. So everybody, I just uh, we're going to keep going right now. Let's get started. Um, all right, where were we at? I think verse 5, but they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am, I am the gate for the sheep. Jesus is the gate to life. Jesus is the gate that the followers go into. He is, he is the antidote for our sins. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers or sinners. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. And it goes back to that great uh, verse in uh, the Old Testament. The righteous will run into the wall and they will be saved. That's the same thing as people who enter the gates of Jesus, people who enter and re receive Jesus as, as their Savior, they will be saved. 
He will come out and go out and find pasture and and he will find peace. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Amen. Amen. That is so true. People will find to have it to the full. They will have their life to the full if they receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. There are so many great things about being a Christian and there's so many negatives about being a Christian. Think about, um, you know, it's not a a good ride, you know, it's not going to be an easy ride when you become a Christian. I know that for a fact and, you know, a, a lot of Christians in the world, I mean, there's Christians in all kinds of places in the world, especially the Middle East. Christians are being persecuted. People who convert to Christianity over there are being persecuted being killed for their faith so being a Christian is not always the like the funnest thing it's gonna it's gonna be hard but Jesus promises everybody eternal life in the end people who put their faith in him I am the good shepherd the good shepherd laid down lays down his life for the sheep that's what Jesus did on the cross for us he laid his life down for everybody not only the people who put his faith in him, but not only the people who put their faith in him, but also the people, the unbelievers. He put his life on the line. He hired, The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. And that's kind of like the devil you know, he just kind of scatters us. He tempts us into sin. And what happens? We go away from God. We get distracted on life and in its worries. And we flee from God. And that's what the devil is all about. Is just He's just like a wolf scattering a sheep. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. Jesus is saying he is the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of the sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life. He laid down his life only to take it up again, which he did. He rose from the grave three days later. It's truth. It happened. No doubt about it. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. He did it on his own will. He didn't have to die on the cross. He didn't have to rise from the dead, but he wanted to for a purpose. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life, only take it up again. I mean, you just got to think about those words. They're, they speak volumes of truth. And so let's go to verse 19. At, the, at these words, the Jews were again divided. They just could not make up their mind on what Jesus was saying, if it was true or not. Many of them said, He is demon-possessed and raving mad. How many times have we read in the book of John that people are accusing Jesus of demon possession. It's just not true. He is not, he is not possessed by demons. I tell you what. Why listen to him? But others said, These are not the sayings of a man possessed by a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? There's just something truly, truly good about Jesus. And that is, not only can he open the eyes of the blind, but he can open the eyes of the spiritual blind. He can open the eyes of the people who are walking in moral filth, walking in ways that Jesus has not called humans to do, walking in sin, walking in darkness. Well, my friend, if you're watching this and you're pretty new to my channel and you're pretty uh, just kind of interested in what I'm saying and you're not particularly a Christian or you've never put your faith in Jesus Christ, I encourage you, I encourage you 
at the end of this video to really just ponder what I've, I've been saying. Um, go back and reread um, the verses that I read. And if you have, haven't watched my other videos, go back and watch some of my old videos of John. And um, I just pray that you would seek God and that God would find you. So everybody, thank you for tuning in today. And I hope you have a blessed week. God bless. And I'll see you next time.